So uh, with that, I would like to invite uh, Professor Neil Dhara Mishra, who I suppose is ready with uh, the first lecture of the SRIP lecture series. So Neil. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so welcome to SRIP. As I'm sure you've realized by now, this is a super special experience. My congratulations to all of you for being selected into the program. Um, now, just to get started with this lecture, I don't really have slides. I'm going to try and play a game with you. I estimated that I'm going to be standing between you and lunch. So I, you know, it's a short, fun uh, sort of a journey that we will undertake. Um, and it's really about um, introducing you to this field of game theory, which uh, sadly is not about the theory of uh, video games or games like football or cricket as you know them. Uh, although they qualify in a certain sense, we're going to be talking about a broader philosophical setup where we are trying to understand how self-interested agents who are motivated to you know, optimize their own gains and payoffs, how they behave when certain scenarios are presented to them. Okay, So we're going to be, in particular, we are going to be addressing a specific puzzle, which is what makes people trust each other. Yeah, um, There used to be a game uh, that was aired on the BBC uh, between 2007 and 2009. It was, I think it was called the Golden Balls. Has anyone seen it? Uh, OK. Uh, yes, OK, cool. Uh, so they, um, they, had, they had various rounds. And it was a pretty complex setup. But the, the most interesting round was the last one, where there would be a significant amount of money at stake. And there were two players on either side of the table. And uh, both the players had two options. Uh, the first option was to split, and the other option was to steal. Um, and if both players, so they had to independently decide their move, and if both players chose to split, then the jackpot would be split between the two players. And if both players decided to steal, then uh, screw them, right? So if both of them decide to steal, then neither player gets anything. On the other hand, if one player steals and the other player splits, what do you think will happen? The player who steals gets the entire jackpot, right? And I think the, uh, in the interest of television drama, uh, before the players committed their moves, the TV host would uh, allow the players to talk to each other, talk to each other about what they're going to do. As you can imagine, in most situations, most players would try to convince the other player that they are going to split. And they would request the other player to also split. Right? Uh, what do you think happened most of the time, though? Right. So in most cases, it turns out um, that statistically in the history of the game, um, it was fairly rare that both players conceded to split, which in some sense, is the best move for everybody. But that was pretty rare. And in fact, what would happen frequently is that one player would split and one player would steal, which means that one player was probably a pretty good actor and managed to convince the other player to play for split, while they themselves ended up betraying, uh, betraying the system. So what we are going to do is we're going to kind of relive this game and play it amongst us. Okay, and sort of see if we can learn something about uh, human behavior, about how people think, how people analyze scenarios, and so on. So I'm very happy to ask everybody to take their phones out. Usually, as MCs, I'm always saying, you know, please, apne phones go silent. Please switch it off. But now I'm going to actually ask you to use your phones. Uh, go into menti.com so you can participate in this demonstration. The code for participating in this interaction is 557638. Uh, so I'm going to be displaying questions which, for which you will get options, and, and you, will get, you will get a chance to answer them. That's, that's the goal. Uh, in fact, that's a good point, so let me get rid of this. So 
So actually, this is a demonstration that's on the web. It's made by somebody called Nikki Case, who is brilliant with these interactive demonstrations. Uh, there is a book called The Evolution of Cooperation. Um, and there was a follow-up book called The Complexity of Cooperation. Uh, and this demonstration is sort of very closely based on the book. Uh, I will give you the URL at the end so that you can play it at, at your leisure. But right now, we will kind of go through it as a group. Uh, has anyone played this game before, The Evolution of Trust? OK, that's a relief, because it's very worried that some of you are going to get bored. Uh, so this starts off with a story about truce during World War I, a very surprising uh, but also very heartwarming set of incidents that happened in 1914, the Christmas of 1914, uh, when uh, I think the German and the British soldiers and, and many other, many other uh, competing uh, or warring nations it turned out that soldiers would just cross borders, exchange drinks, uh, you know, laugh and cry together. Uh, in, and this was in the middle of a war, right? And this mostly happened in the context of trench warfare, where there's really close combat and people are, you know, seeing each other, facing off of each other again and again, uh, several times during a few weeks. And... <laughs> The question that is being posed here is, why is it that even during wartime, enemies become friends? And why is it that during peace, friends become enemies? Which is alluding to the fact that even when everything is fine, somehow there tends to be a lot of mistrust and a lot of you know, um, envy and things like that. So, so we're going to try and address this question. Uh, it, look a little, it may look a little depressing to start out. But bear with me, because as we play this out, we'll actually try and understand uh, some key principles which will hopefully allow you to see what makes people trust each other, what makes people cooperate. And hopefully, you can set up those scenarios in your own life, right? So, um, so you know, understand this through a game which is very similar to the golden balls. Uh, here, we have two players and we have a machine. And the way this is going to work is that if you put a coin in the machine, the other player gets three coins. Okay? You put in a coin, the other player gets three coins. And it's the same for the other player. If he or she puts in a coin, then you get three coins. Okay? And you have two moves, therefore. You could either choose to put a coin in the machine, or you could choose to not put a coin in the machine. So if you choose to put a coin in the machine, then we are going to call that the cooperate move. And if you choose to hold back, we are going to call that the cheat move. Yeah? Is the game clear? Is the mechanics clear? Yeah? OK, so that's, that's what happens. Now, the first question that we are going to ask ourselves is the following. Suppose you know that the other player, yeah. Oh, OK, all right, I'll switch back, thanks. Uh, so now that the game is clear, I can sort of switch. Whoops, sorry. I'll quickly load that up again. Uh, I haven't really started the survey, so that gives you a little bit of time to think about what your move is going to be. Let's So I don't know if the code has changed, but if you go to menti.com and enter 557638. And sorry, was there another problem with the interaction or just the code? So yeah, that's right. So right now, you probably just see a message saying the golden rule and beyond. And I think uh, so this is great. About 55 of you have joined us already, which is perfect. So I'm hiding the results here because I don't want you to get influenced by what your friends are saying. But let 
let me remind you about the setting. The other player is cheating. What are you going to do? At this point, some of you are thinking of an answer. Does anyone have a question? OK, we'll get to that point soon, hopefully. OK, so, so it's slightly divided. Uh, it's not as unilateral as I thought it would be. A uh, whole bunch of nice people in the room who think <laughs> we should cooperate, even if the other chap is cheating. But since the majority at the moment is in favor of cheating, that's what I'm going to do. So sorry, I lost the URL when I accidentally quit the browser. So just give me a second here. All right, so cheat, uh, which is fine. Uh, for those of you who said cooperate, uh, <laughs> again, maybe you want to ask yourselves, What's the goal here, right? Uh, if the goal is to be a fair player or be the nice guy, then sure, maybe you should cooperate. Uh, but the goal here at the moment is a very cold one. It is just to maximize our payoffs. Our payoffs here are how many coins are, are we going to get out of this machine, right? So it's just at the moment we are thinking for ourselves, OK? Um, and in this case, if the other player is cheating, then by cooperating, you actually lose a coin, and you get nothing in return. Versus if you cheat, at least you don't lose anything. Is that clear? Is the comparison between these scenarios clear? Yeah. OK, so in some sense, the correct answer, within quotes, but the correct answer is, in this case, to cheat. What if the other player cooperates? Yeah. What if the other player cooperates? What should you do? So it's a bit late for some of you, but I was going to say think carefully about your options here, and think carefully about what the payoffs are going to be. So I'm just going to wait for this to hit 80. Whoa. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> um, a burnt child dreads the fire, I guess. Um, or you're just being mean now. Uh, this is fairly selfish, right? So uh, <laughs> what's interesting is that when the other person was cheating, some of you were cooperating, but clearly some of you have just switched over now. So it's a slight change of personality already. So it turns out that. Uh, that's mean, but it's also the right thing to do. Uh, because if the other person is cooperating, you are still better off if you cheat. Right? Why is that? Because when the other person cooperates, if you cheat, you get three coins without losing anything. So your payoff here is three. On the other hand, if the other, given that the other person is cooperating, if you cooperate as well, then you lose a coin and you stand to gain three. So your net profit is only two. OK? So you're better off cheating. Is that clear? Yeah? So everyone who answered that, not because of guesswork, but because you managed to work through it, kudos to you. Um, that's pretty smart. But those of you who are being nice, sorry, but that's just not how this works. And hopefully you're beginning to feel the paradox of the situation here, or at least the irony of it, 
which is that even though in this payoff matrix, both of you are better off cooperating, both of you will end up cheating because nothing special about you. This exact line of logic applies to the other player and he's going to cheat as well. Yes? So this is uh, the celebrated prisoner's dilemma, which some of you are perhaps already aware of, and it models several real life situations. Um, and maybe towards the end, if we have time, I'll tell you about how it applies to computer networking, how it applies to uh, countries trying to agree on climate change policies. All of this, of course, to say that all of this is manifested as a prisoner's dilemma instance is a bit of an oversimplification, but at the heart of it, this is the issue, that the selfish behavior is not optimal for everybody. But what do you think, when you think individually, rationally, what you see as optimal uh, is, is not the globally nice thing to do. However, what makes situations interesting, so what we're going to get into now is the so-called iterated prisoner's dilemma. So we're really thinking long term here, okay? So you don't just get to play this game once. You get to play this game multiple times. And you're probably even trying to read the other person, figure out how they're playing this game. And remember, the goal is always to maximize your payoffs. Yeah? OK. So um, we're going to be playing against five players here. And all of them have you know, a different style of playing. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to survey you for the first move. So remember that every time a new player comes on the block, it's a fresh slate. They've not seen your sins from the past. They don't know what you have done in the previous rounds with the previous players. So it's a fresh slate. So when you're starting off on a fresh slate, I'll give you a chance. I'll give everyone a chance to contemplate and figure out the first move. But then after that, I'm just going to pick volunteers and ask them to tell me what to do. OK, so for the first move with the first player, so now you're playing a real game. Don't, you don't know at this point what the other player is going to do. Previously, I asked you, what if the other player cheats? What if the other player cooperates? Right now, you have no idea what the other player is going to do. So what's your first move? What's your first real move? Blank slate, what sort of a person do you want to be? <laughs> okay, close call. Uh, okay, so very close, but we. Okay, I think you stopped here. So, um, this, okay, so we don't need a tiebreaker. This is very close cheat. All right, lucky you. OK, so now um, somebody want to volunteer the next move? OK, maybe we can just, I don't know, go in order. Cooperate, OK. All right. Too bad, yeah. Uh, so let me just see if we can do this with the sound on. This has some really nice music, so. So you first cheated. Uh, a poor guy was cooperating in good faith. You cheated him, and now it's no use because the guy is like, now I'm going to take revenge, probably. What is your next move going to be? Cheat. Seems like it makes sense. Let's cheat. Um, what did the other guy do? He cooperated, maybe because, I don't know, he felt bad about cheating when you were cooperating. Who knows, right? What's your next move? Cheat. Some people are like, cheat, okay. I'll go with cooperate because that was the suggestion. No dice. 
Um, at least locally, it was the wrong move. What do you want to do? Cheat. And you want to convince him otherwise? Cheat. Okay. Okay. Not so bad. A couple of a couple of wrong moves, but that's going to happen. That's fine. Um, new player. New player. So let's. Uh, you have a chance to start off with a fresh slate. point we are mostly this new player doesn't know your history okay so <laughs> all right still pretty divided but still in favor of cheating <sighs> okay new player let's cheat um Okay, uh, this guy also started out cheating, okay, so just like you. Uh, what's your next move? Yeah, cheat. Uh, the guy is cheating, let's cheat him back. Okay, uh, none of you are relenting, no nice people. Cheat, okay. All right, seriously, nobody giving in. Cheat. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> new player, this one looks, uh, this one looks cute, so. Gentlemen, you have a chance to impress the lady, but no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. Let's go with. Oh, she looks really sad. Okay. So, what are you going to do? Cooperate. Okay. Um, it's looking real sad, and she also started out cooperating. It's not bad. It's the best you could have hoped for if you were cooperating. Cooperate. If you get a sense that the person in front of you is cooperating, what should you do? Okay, uh, well, just the nice girl in the pink hat, let's go over it. What about you? Cheat. All right. Uh, you're almost sure that she's going to cooperate. She's cooperated in every round so far. Why not take advantage of her, right? That's, at least I think that's the logic. Sure enough. She cooperated, you cheated, she went away also. So, <laughs> yeah, tough luck. Uh, fourth player. Fresh start. Let's see if our mindset's changing here. Closer balance, but okay, no. Nice. Okay, start out being mean. Okay, worked out in your favor. Uh, what do you want to do? Cooperate. Let's try and thoda price chit types cooperate. Sorry. Cheat. This is 
just go back to being mean okay cheat are you are you changing your mind cheat no peer pressure cheat okay cooperate <laughs> cooperate okay very firm cooperate tough luck okay last player and then we will uh kind of try and understand what's going on here so last player fresh start what do you want to do okay <laughs> just getting nastier big majority for cheating uh okay you managed to exploit a potentially nice guy uh where did we stop what's your next move cheat okay cheat even though he cooperated let's cheat and see if we no sorry got smart uh cheat Okay, it looks like he was even giving you a chance and you managed to take advantage of it. Congratulations. What's your next move? Cheat. Okay. Still being exploitative and successfully so. What about you? Corporate Not, not not clear what happened there why why would why would he cheat what about you cheat it's just go back to being mean hmm. not bad what's your next move cheat i finally caught on okay so these were the people you played with um your total score was 29 which is which is all right um let's just go back and think about what happened the first player was copycat and he would just copy your last move okay so if you cheated in this round he would cheat you back in the next round if you cooperated in this round he would cooperate in the next round The next two players were the always cheaters and the always cooperators. So the nice lady in pink was always cooperating irrespective of what you did. And uh the chap before that was really mean and would always cheat. Uh the next two so Grudger would start off cooperating and if you ever cheated him then he would always cheat you after that. Okay? So you make one mistake and he's not going to forgive you ever. Detective is a little more sophisticated so his first four moves are experimental he's trying to analyze you so he'll go cooperate cheat cooperate cooperate after that depending on what you did with detective he's going to either behave like always cheat or copycat so if you ever cheated him he's going to behave like copycat if you ever cooperated then he's going to behave like always cheat which is like what some of you were doing when you sensed that this person's being nice uh let's just let's just get as much out of it as we can right so that's what detective does so the detective knows that you're capable of cheating then he's going to go smart and behave like copycat if he thinks that you're going to be always nice he's going to just take advantage of you okay all right so what if we get these guys to play against each other which is to say we take two of these at a time and have them play 10 rounds of this game okay and what's going to happen is completely determined because they all have these fixed strategies you know what's going to happen but it's going to take a while to calculate the outcome so i'm just going to ask you to go with your gut feeling here and tell me who do you think will win So think about it a little bit if you want. So copycat copies your previous move. Always cheaters, always cooperators are the mean and the nice guys. 
Grudger will start out on the right foot, but will never forgive you if you cheat him once, and Detective does some complicated things, so. So who do you think will win? Okay, some real optimists in the room who think that they always cooperate will win. That's <laughs> that even I can tell you outright is not going to happen because they just get exploited by everybody, unfortunately. Uh, but okay, nice try. So some of you think. Okay. So it's more or less an even split between always cheat and detective, which is quite reasonable. Always cheat seems like the meanest possible thing you can do, and so uh, that should probably have the highest payoff, and probably detective is a good bet because he's doing something complicated, and in some situations he's behaving like always cheaters, so maybe they have a good shot at this as well. And some of you think the grudgers, okay, so uh, the grudgers also have this always cheat behavior most of the time. So it seems like the cheaters, um, very close call between all cheat and detective. Has everyone voted here? S probably. So, okay, fine. I'll, I'll go with always cheat because it was technically the majority. Okay. So... So let's play this out and see how this goes, right? Uh, there's a story that you will see on the screen about the uh, war in the trenches, which I will not walk you through. I will just walk you through the matches. Copycat versus always cheat. So in the first round, copycat gets taken advantage of, but after that, he always cheats the cheater back. So it's, it's minus one for the first mistake, but after that, the cheater has no advantage, right? Copycat versus always cooperate, they help each other out, right? So it's always going to be 2-2 two, two in every round, yes? Because the copycat starts out cooperating, always cooperate, cooperates back, and this keeps going for a while. Copycat versus grudger, something similar happens. Copycat versus detective, again, you can see this swinging behavior in those two rounds where the detective was checking out the copycat, but by and large, they cooperate. Always cheat versus always cooperate is the most ruthless battle because uh, these... <laughs> so uh, always cheat just really hogs on this opportunity here. Uh, always cheat versus grudger, again, gets some advantage, not much. It's just like copycat. Uh, always cheat versus detective, just trust me on the numbers here. You can go back and verify this. Uh, always cooperate versus grudger. Again, grudger behaves just like always cooperate if you cooperate with him. Uh, always cooperate versus detective. Again, detective, remember we said that if he detects that he's always being nice, he switches to always cheating behavior. So that's what's happening here. So also pretty depressing, yeah, so uh, it's, it's almost like the all cheats versus always corporates. Grudger versus detective is a close call, uh, but yeah, plus seven, plus three. And okay, so let's bring the sound effects back in. Okay, literally, the least intuitive option, uh, the copycats win this tournament, yeah? And uh, you could wax philosophical about this. What the copycats are doing is essentially what some people call the gold, golden rule, live and let live, you know, do unto others as others do to you, and so on and so forth. Um, and there's some, some philosophy here about why, why this works and so on. So again, I'll let you read it uh, in your own time, uh, but let's just do one more quick, which is to take this whole tournament and put it inside an evolutionary setup. Uh, what do I mean by that? So we're gonna play 
Uh, we're going to play this tournament multiple times, and we're going to have a population, an initial population, and everyone knows Darwinian stuff, so what's going to happen is the survival of the fittest, so the five people with the highest scores get duplicated at the expense of the five people with the lowest scores who get eliminated. Okay, so you're going to try and see over multiple rounds uh, who has the best chance of survival. Okay. So we have removed the grudges and the detectives because they're kind of complicated to think about. So initially we'll just work with the nice guys, the mean guys, and the copycats. Maybe call them the smart guys. Uh, and we've given the nice guys a bit of a leg up because they are really nice, so maybe they need some initial help. So we have more of them than, than either of the others, as you can see. So 15 nice guys, five copycats, and five eaters. Who win? So the process is clear. You play this tournament. Everyone plays 10 rounds as before. But now we're just going to keep playing this. We're going to, we're going to keep eliminating the bottom five. And we'll let the top guys replicate. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, the question is, is there a dominant population? Or will it sort of oscillate? Um, so let me just tell you that there will be a dominant population. Which category of people do you think? Going to be. So the thing is that the initial conditions are in favor of the nice guys. The repeating conditions seem to be in favor of the cheaters. Um, the copycats, we just know that they were pretty brilliant last time, so they also have a shot at this. It's really not clear what's going to happen, yeah? Okay, it's a pretty clear verdict for the cheaters, so let me go ahead and place my bet here. And let's see what happens, right? So I'm going to play one round here. Uh, who gets eliminated? I'm assuming you can see the numbers, right? So when I eliminate the bottom five, who are going to disappear? The all corporates, yeah, the nice, the nice uh, guys, in this case, girls maybe, are going to disappear because they have the lowest scores. And the reason they have the lo lowest scores is because, so notice that they have some score, and that's because they help each other out. And also the copycats help them out, right? Because, so those are, those are all games that are going at 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 and so on, right? But unfortunately, when they play with the cheaters, uh, all of those winnings get diminished because the cheaters really managed to exploit them. Remember, it was minus 10 plus 30 in favor of the cheaters, right? So that's why the scores are kind of low and they're going to get eliminated. So, and we reproduce the top five, which at the moment are the, are the cheaters, yeah? And if we do this again, it's the same story. Uh, do it again, it's the same story. And now we are left with the cheaters and the copycats, okay? But notice that you have many more cheaters than you have copycats. I want you to take a moment to think about, is this good for the cheaters or is this good for the copycats? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> so let's play the tournament, see what happens. Notice that the copycats are dominating this game, and why is that? The cheaters cheat themselves to apne pair pe kulhadi maar rahe, right? So they are they they are um, falling into their own trap. Okay. So what's happening here is that the cheaters don't even they're so selfish that they don't even help each other out. Okay. The copycats um, don't get as badly cheated by the cheaters as the nice guys did. Okay. And on top of that, they help each other out. Yes? 
So that's why the copycats come out on the top. So notice that the copycats are sort of back in action now, even in spite of the overwhelming majority of the cheaters. Uh, so the summary of the situation is that when the cheaters had the nice guys to exploit, they were successful. But when the nice guys were all gone, uh, even a few of the copycats were enough to demolish the cheaters because the copycats are just the right mix. So they are nice, but they're not stupid, right? So uh, just the right amount of nice, uh, enough, to, enough to get rid of the cheaters and enough to proliferate sort of their own. So from here, you can probably predict what will happen. Um, so the copycats continue to dominate the cheaters. The cheaters are getting a taste of their own medicine. And finally, uh, the copycats come out on top again. Yeah? So part of the point here is, uh, of course, one quick aside is that if you bring the garages and the detectives back in, it works the same way. So uh, eventually, the copycats dominate. Uh, the reason you see a few grudges is because the grudges and the copycats, when they're together, they all behave the same way. So you'll see a few grudges for a while. Uh, but if you play this game long enough, they will. Uh, so at this point, everybody is tied. So whom you eliminate and whom you replicate is random. That's why you see this behavior. But the point is that even with more players in the mix, copycat continues to dominate. Uh, right now, we've gotten rid of the grudges as well. So, so yeah, this is the main point here, that, that this classic tit-for-tat philosophy is probably not just a moral philosophy, but there is even some mathematical basis to it. Um, But the question we started out asking is what leads to the evolution of distrust, right? So the copycats seem to be proliferating a nice world where there is trust, right? And this essay, is, this, essay this book, is really addressing the question of why do people not trust each other? And uh, in the interest of time, I think I'm going to cut to the chase and tell you that there are basically three reasons. Um, Here's a simulation with a lot of nice guys in the beginning who quickly get eliminated. And as we have already learned, the copycats dominate. But notice that this is what was happening when every pair of players was playing 10 rounds per match. What do you think will happen if we reduce this to one round per match? I think I have this as a question here. So let's quickly address this. Does anything change if you change the number of rounds that the player play against each other? Some of you are bravely voting for cheaters the third time, even though <laughs> the last couple of times it turned out to be in favor of the copycats. But this time you would actually be right because with one round, what happens is that the cats don't get enough time to really build up their scores, right? So what's going to happen is uh, what's going to happen is that you can see the numbers for the cheaters growing faster than the numbers for the copycats. And this behavior continues if you play the game for one round, two rounds, three rounds, four, or five. So if you don't give, so it's a nice calculation that you can go back and check either on the simulation or by doing it, working it out by hand. But the point is that if you don't give enough time for the interactions to build up, the copycats are no longer successful. So one of the things that you need for the evolution of trust is time. You need a lot of repeat interactions for players to understand each other and for players to develop the sense of trust. So that's the first. Um, there are two other details here, which I'm going to sort of welcome you to go back to the simulation and check, check this out, because I think you're running slightly short of time here. But basically, uh, OK, so let me just continue from here. 
So the second point, so one point is about giving interactions enough time to build up. The second point is about the structure of the payoff matrix. As you can imagine, if these numbers change, the nature of the game changes a lot as well. So you should play around with this payoff matrix and see what happens if you increase the reward for cooperation, what happens if you increase the punishment for not cooperating. In all of these different scenarios, the games will evolve differently. Okay, and uh, the last thing that stands, so one thing that stands as a barrier to trust is if the incentive for cooperating is not enough. Okay, and in the worst kind of games, uh, in the worst kind of situation is what's called the zero sum game. Uh, again, people who have some prior exposure to game theory may be familiar, if you're not, that's fine. The idea of a zero sum game is that my win is exactly equal to your loss. And therefore that propagates this idea that I must get ahead at your expense. Whereas if you don't have a zero sum situation, that means that it proliferates the idea that we can both win together, which promotes cooperation, okay? So setting up these matrices in a way that allows for that leeway, for people to believe that there is enough room for everyone to grow, set it up so that it's not a zero sum game, that is what will allow trust and mutual cooperation to breed. And again, there are political scientists who have written a lot about this sort of thing. How do you create situations where my benefit is not coming at the cost of your loss? Okay. In fact, if you benefit, I benefit as well. That's the kind of situation that you want to set up. And the final thing that's a barrier to trust is the so-called mistakes, uh, errors of communication. So again, I'll play this out real quick for you. So here are two copycats who are, you know, going along, getting along really well. Uh, but here this guy makes a mistake. And although he intended to cooperate, he ends up cheating. Okay, so the other guy sees the cheat behavior, doesn't know it's a mistake, doesn't know it was not intended, and responds by cheating. The other guy will cooperate in the next round, right? So what will happen is that you will have this alternation of cheating and cooperating, cheating and cooperating. Um, you know, uh, full Bollywood, you know, hero villain style. You're going to get into this cycle of revenge of which you never get out of, all because of one mistake that you made in the beginning, which was probably unintentional. And this is also pretty realistic. Happens in real life all the time uh, with friends, with colleagues. So. Uh, you must set up mechanisms that are robust to dealing with mistakes. And at this point, the story goes on to introduce new players who are robust to mistakes and who can deal with a little bit of miscommunication here and there. So, um, so we haven't played out the whole thing. I encourage you to do so because uh, there's a lot of interesting details that you can think about even if you are not somebody who plans to work in game theory. All of this is widely applicable in life and uh, applies to situations uh, which involve global challenges, whether it's uh, you know, political agreements, whether it's situations like climate change or anything that involves multiple agents trying to make up their minds about optimal actions. So um, I will share with you the link to this playable game. Nikki Case has done a lot of other work, uh, which are all interactive essays based on some core set of ideas. I highly recommend that you check out all of them. Uh, this one is just that uh, if you just search for Nikki Case and Trust, you will stumble on this one, and then you can go back, find his website. The last page of the simulation has links to a lot of interesting books and essays and stuff like that. Um, so I encourage you to find out more about game theory, even just as uh, even just as a hobbyist. I mean, I don't personally consider myself a researcher in game theory, at least not yet. But I found this to be a very exciting and a very illuminating field. It's a great mix of, you know, philosophy, math economics, a bunch of other fields that sort of come together, help us understand human behavior better. And uh, if you want to have some fun, you should Google for Ibrahim and Nick and the Golden Balls. There was this crazy episode where, remember, the players have to say, do we split or do we steal, right? So and normally everyone is saying, oh, I swear I'm going to split. Please split. I'm a nice person, et cetera, et cetera. There was this one episode when Nick was up against Ibrahim. And Nick told him, look, Ibrahim, I'm an honest guy, and I'm going to steal, OK? I'm going to steal. I'm asking, you to sp I'm asking you to split so that I get the jackpot, and then after the show is over, I'll meet you separately. I'll split the money with you in your hotel room. <laughs> okay. 
And this is totally unexpected. Nobody had done this in this game before. And Ibrahim doesn't know how to react. Right? Dude is like, no, look, why don't, why don't you split and I split, right? Why are you going to steal, right? So, so um, in the uncut version of the TV show, in, in the real live game, they argued for 45 minutes uh, in not the best of language, maybe. And this went on for a while. And Nick did not budge. He was like, I'm going to steal no matter what you do. Uh, so you can, you can go ahead and do what you want. But if you split, then I will split the money with you later. And uh, any guesses as to what happened? So one possibility is that Ibrahim split, Nick stole, and didn't split the money with him at the end. It's a very real possibility. What actually happened was that Ibrahim split because he was convinced, uh, he, was, he felt like he didn't have a choice, and Nick also split. So that's, uh, as I say, it's very, very rare in this game for both players to split. Uh, so it's a very unusual strategy. So, um, so it's really very dramatic. If you watch the episode on YouTube, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, but in any case, these, uh, this is one game show that tells you a lot about uh, you know, the human psyche behavior, how, um, you know, how people make decisions and so on. I think it's all very interesting. Uh, with that, I think I'm going to call it a wrap. Uh, you've, been, uh, you've been a total sport. Thank you for your attention throughout this talk. And I wish you a wonderful time uh, in this internship program. All right. Thanks. Bye.